QuickBooks Online 2023 Sales Tax Setup. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Practice File. We set up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have the free QuickBooks Online Test Drive Sample Company open. If you want these two things open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. If using Google Chrome, you can find the incognito by selecting the three dots and choosing the new incognito window and then typing in QuickBooks Online test drive to find the sample company. We will be using the sample company to compare and contrast the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars will be in, indicated or can be seen with the items on the left and the business view, the view that the sample company will be in. You can toggle back and forth between the two views by selecting the cog dropdown and switch back and forth between accounting and business here. In prior presentations, we set up the company file. We looked at some of the preferences under the cog button up top. We looked at our chart of accounts. We are entering the beginning balances, imagining that we had a prior accounting system and we're entering the beginning balances from it as of the cutoff date, 12-31-22, so we can move forward as of January 1st, 2023. Last time we entered the inventory items which got us to this number for the inventory assets at the 2,896. Now that we have that in place, we also want to think about setting up our sales tax so that when we make the sales, the sales tax will be appropriately calculated going forward. Quick recap on the sales tax, how it's going to work. I'm going to jump on over to the flowchart. Uh, remember, support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The sales tax will typically be applied. This is a desktop flowchart, but we're just looking at the flow here, looking at the customer cycle. Usually when we make a sale, if there's gonna be sales tax applicable, we'll need to be using the invoice form or the sales receipt form. We're gonna be charging whatever we charge for the actual item being sold. And then we're gonna to have to bump it up for the sales tax so that we're gonna be collecting on the sales tax. The sales tax in theory is not something that we are charging as the business owner, but rather we are the collection agent for the tax agency. And therefore we're not gonna record the amount we collect for sales tax as revenue and then expense it when paid, but rather we're gonna put it on the books as a payable when we make the sale and then we'll decrease the payable when we pay the sales tax. So that's the general idea. In the United States, the sales tax is going to be a, uh, a state and local tax as opposed to a federal tax. So we don't have like a, a blanketed sales tax over the whole country. It'll be dependent upon the location and could be dependent on other, like where the sales took place and so on and so forth. But therefore it's a little bit more complex. QuickBooks does have a nice setup process to, to try to help us to calculate the sales tax. Now also we wanna keep three things in mind with the sales tax. The first thing to keep in mind is you, you gotta turn on the sales tax, which we'll do down here in the taxes tab on the left. If you're in the business view, you also have a taxes tab uh, on the left as well. Once the sales tax is turned on and set up, the system needs to know whether or not the sales tax is gonna be applicable or not. The primary thing that will give the indication there is the items that we set up last time, the products and services. That's under the sales tab and then the products and services and the business view, it's under the get paid and paid tab and the products and services. So we set these up before. For us, we're gonna say that the inventory items are typically subject to sales tax. The service items are not gonna be subject to sales tax. 
So once we turn the sales tax on, we'll have to verify that there's properly recording the items having a taxable component or not. And then the third thing we have to think about are the customers, meaning, for example, uh, is the customer subject to a, to what sales tax is the customer going to be subject to? Uh, and if we have multiple sales tax applicable, and we might have some customers that aren't subject to sales tax at all. So we could then go to the customer and kind of override the primary item that's going to indicate sales tax, which will be the inventory items. Okay, that said, let's see how it works. Let's set up the sales tax. We're going to go to the tab on the left. We're going to go to the taxes and we're in the sales tax. So I'm going to close this back out. It says up top, automatically calculate sales tax rate for each sale. One, create an invoice or receipt. Two, we calculate the sales tax rate based on date, location, type of product or service and customers. Those are the three items. And three, we keep your sales tax updated when laws change so you stay com uh, compliant, which is nice. The system's getting better and better at applying the sales taxes on state and local level, which is more complex than just a federal level. So that's that's nice. So we're going to use the automatic sales tax. Here's uh, the address we have on record. So they're using our address, which is going to be the primary address that they're going to try to calculate the sales tax in. So they're going to say, hey, what are the, this is my, my interpretation. What are the sales tax requirements for a business located at that address? that's going to be what they're going to assume is going to be applicable in general. So we're going to say, all right, let's keep that. So I'm in California here. In practice, we'll try to make the sales tax kind of generic. I'm, I'm going to try to override it to 5% when we make the sales, just to keep it like a generic sales tax. But it's going to be based on the location here. Okay, tell us more about your taxes. We calculate sales tax based on what you sell and where you sell it. So if you sell in multiple locations, we calculate the correct sales tax for each one. So do you need to calculate sales tax outside of California? I'm gonna say no, which will of course be more simplified. If you do have sales tax in multiple locations, then you'd hit yes, and you gotta make sure that you're filling out the information necessary for, for the sales tax for multiple location. So it looks like you need to pay tax uh, to just one government office in California. We call this your tax agency your tax agency, California Department of Tax and Fees Administration. I'm going to copy that in case they want to force me to make the, the vendor for that. But yeah, that's who we pay then in California. Looks good. Nice long title for the California office there. Automatic sales tax is set up. Give it a spin by creating your first invoice. So I'm not going to create the invoice here because I think that kind of confuses things. I'm going to close this out first. And that then gives us our sales tax information to further uh, populate. So how often do you file sales tax? So you can find this info on your sales tax business registration. So if we're subject to sales tax, then we got to make sure that we're, we're set up our sales tax with the, the appropriate office of the sales tax. And then we need to determine how frequently we need to pay the sales tax. Now, remember what happens, we make sales. We're going to collect the sales tax, which hopefully should be set up to do that at this point in time. And then the money that we've collected from the customers, because we're just the collection agency now, they've made us into their, their, their collection agency. We're going to have to then pay that to the government at some point in the future. How is that going to work? Am I going to be collecting the money on the sales for the month of January, for example, and then have to pay the January collections I made in February? Or maybe I can collect for three months, the whole quarter, January, February, March, and then I pay at the first month of the following quarter and so on. Or maybe they let me collect all year and I only have to pay one time. What's going to be the deal? So if you can't find it or change or, or it changed, uh, check out the table to see. So if you, so normally you would want to go to your personal information, but they have the default information down below. You got the T California Department of Tax and Fees. This is, of course, subject to California. It will differ based on your location, but you have a similar kind of concept. So filing frequency. So do we file monthly, quarterly, or yearly? Again, this will be dependent on location and typically the amount of sales you make. Generally, if you don't make a lot of sales, the government's more likely to say, hey, we're just going to make you file yearly because whatever, you don't make a lot of money anyways. 
so that's fine. But if you start making more money, then they want it quarterly because they want to check up on you to make sure that you're doing things right. If you make a lot of money, they want it monthly because they want their money because now you're making money and they want their money and the, you know how it works. So there it is. So what, I'm going to say monthly for the purposes of the practice problem so that we can see a payment happen. Then we've got the California filing frequency. So this is just for California. But again, you would think there would be similar similar filing requirements depending on your location. So here's the source information. If you wanted to check it out, I'm going to save it there. And so that should complete the setup process. So now when I'm in the sales tab, so if I hit the plus button, I'm in the sales tab again, we've got our information uh, auto save for sales tax. The California is our location. We just have the one and then the California Department of Tax. We've got the nice little tag down here. You've got your sales tax settings. If you need to make any adjustments to the sales tax setting, here's going to be the agency. If we needed to add an agency, we can hit the plus button and go through the process of adding another agency as up top. You can also have your custom rates down below. Now, for the purposes of the practice problem, I would like to have basically a custom rate of like 5% just to make it generic. So I'm going to try to add a custom rate. And so add a custom sales tax rate. And I'm going to just going to say, say, uh, sale or, or test rate. I'm going to say the agency. I'll keep it the California department here. And I'm going to say the rate is 5%. So I'm going to have a generic rate that I'm going to be applying and I'm going to say save. So now we've got our generic rate on down below that we have added. I'm going to go back to our sales center up top. And then you also have your economic nexus over here. If you go into that, it says all states have rules about collecting sales tax from out of state businesses. So you've got kind of problems, of course, now when you have sales that are happening in different, you know, across state lines and whatnot. So if you do enough business in a state, you may owe them sales tax, even if you don't have a physical location there, will help you figure out if you meet the threshold to pay sales tax in different states. So then you can kind of dive in here and do some more research on what your sales tax obligations are when you get into more complex situations, making sales in multiple locations. The next thing we need to look at are the items that we set up in the prior presentations, because if I hit the plus button up top, we're going to be calculating the sales tax possibly when we create an invoice or the sales receipt and the primary item that's going to drive that just to open an invoice and take a look at it will be the item the item is going to be the thing that's going to say hey is this thing subject to sales tax or not so now we want to go over to our items and look at them so do, i'm going to leave without saving do you want to leave without saving i'm going to say yes and then i'm going to go on over to my items which is under the sales tab you'll recall if you're under the business view it's under the get paid and pay tab products and services items and i'm going to close up the hamburger and then scroll down now i think by default it's going to apply the sales tax so if i go in say to editing an inventory item and i scroll down now we have this sales tax uh, item here it says taxes standard rate uh, will apply sales tax based on location only so you could go into this and add more detail so they've got information in here so you, so you can browse uh, the item but notice down here we have it as taxable based on location so i'm going to keep that as the default and so i'm going to say that's great let's go on to the service items then which i think i'm going to have to adjust and remove the sales tax i'm going to say the service items will not be subject to the sales tax so I'm going to just edit the, the service items. This is pro why it probably in some ways might be easier to turn on the sales tax and then add your items. But I think it's easier to see what's happening with the sales tax by doing it this way. So that's why we've done it this way. So we're going to edit the sales tax. And this one I'm going to say is non-taxable. So I'm just going to do this for all the service items. So I've made that service item non-taxable. Save it and close it. So that was this service item. I'm going to do the same for this one, edit this service item, and I'm going to say taxes and say that it's non-taxable and that and say done. And that's for the tuning. So I'm going to save it and close it. And then the late fees, I'm going to edit 
and go down to the taxes and say this is going to be non-taxable done save and close for the late fees the the service charge i'm going to edit and scroll down and say that it's going to be non-taxable save it and that's for the services so i'm going to save and close and then the hours i'm going to edit and say that it is non-taxable two more times non-taxable boom and then diagnostics edit and then i'm going to say that it is non-taxable for that item boom save it and then one more time on the hourly service non-taxable and there we have it so now the inventory items are taxable and i'm saying the service items are not taxable and so we should be able to see that when we make a sales item now so if i hit so let's go to the plus button up top and just add a test transaction. We won't record it, but just to test it out, let's open up an invoice. You can also do a sales receipt, but we'll just go with an invoice. We made up a mock customer, which we just called AAA. So I'm just going to say the AAA customer just to test it out. And then we're going to go down to the products. The products should be the taxable items. So I'm going to choose, say, an ELP. And you can see it has a checkbox automatically as it being a taxable item. Now, sometimes you have to like click off on the second line to make sure that it applies the tax properly down below. So now we've got a $500. That's what we charged for it. And then the sales tax is being applied. Notice it's being applied by location. Now the customer doesn't have a location up top. So therefore it's being applied by what we're saying is our sales location, which is the California location. And that's where it's coming up with this 47,550. You can look at the math related to it. If I go into here, how your sales tax is calculated, we've got the location based on where you sold your item. You need to collect sales tax here. So notice it's actually three things that, that we're collecting. The, the California rate, the Los Angeles County, and the Los Angeles County District. And that adds up to that 9.5% on the sales tax that we're adding. So notice it gets a little bit complex and QuickBooks is actually quite nicely doing that for us and it, the complexity will differ based on location of course and so for our practice problem we'll actually do a generic just the five percent to see the generic tax just so we can make it a generic that could be something that's in concept applicable to the whole country without kind of just focusing on california you can also change the math here if you wanted to just for a practice problem or if you needed to for what, whatever reason by overriding this amount and then you can apply you know like the five percent rate if you wanted to and then and then the reason because i said so you know other and and so if for whatever reason you need to force it to do it you can override it but you want to be careful doing that we we're going to override it kind of for our practice problem now if i close this out the third thing we got to consider is the customer so remember if i go back into my customers which is under the sales tab and then my customers, if you're under the business view, it would be under the get paid and pay tab and then the customers. And then when we set up our customers by default, they're gonna be subject to sales tax based on what they bought, but maybe they're not subject to the sales tax. So if I go into this AAA customer, for example, and I edit them and I go into their sales tax information, which is uh, down here, then usually the sales tax is going to be by default based on location that's what generally happens or you can choose the five percent which is the other the other tax if they're subject to that so if you have multiple uh, rates down below multiple subject to sales tax rates then you would choose the applicable one right it's going to default to the based on the location i could choose the five percent if i wanted to or i can say this customer uh is uh is exempt from sales tax this customer is tax exempt why maybe they're a government agency or charitable organization or whatever and so and i can put the details so if i did that then i close this out i go to the plus button have a new invoice and i choose everything that's the same aaa customer a product subject to sales tax uh, but and that and it even has its sales tax checked off but no sales tax being calculated if that happens you're going to say, hey, why isn't it happening? I got it checked off and nothing's happening. Well, maybe the customer then is set up to not be subject to sales tax. 
So the next thing you need to check is the customer side. Is it proper that the sales tax isn't being calculated even though you got it checked off and sales tax set up and the item subject to sales tax because the, sub the customers somehow s are not subject to sales tax. Let's close that out and try it again. Go back to the customer and let's edit the customer and say now that the customer is subject to a different rate. So we'll say they're subject to sales tax, but maybe it's that 5% rate. So I'll go, okay. So now if I hit the plus button and I go to the invoice and I go, everything's the same. I go into the customer and I say, okay, sales tax, taxable item. But now the rate that's going to be charged is the 5% as opposed to the, the normal California rate, right? And then of course, if I chose something that's not subject to sales tax, like the service item, a diagnostic, then sales tax isn't applied because the item is now saying it's not subject to sales tax. All right, so I'm going to close this back up. By default, if I go into the customers, we'll, we'll go this back into the customer and say by default, it's usually going to have the default setting of the customer's taxable, and then it's going to be based on the location. So that's the default unless you say something otherwise. So one more thing, if I record something on the invoice now, you can see how complex this transaction is getting, even though the data input is quite easy. If I choose an inventory item, then what's this going to do? The invoice is going to increase the accounts receivable by the full amount, including sales tax, 547.50. The other, I'm not going to actually record this, by the way. I'm just saying, what would it do? The other side is going to go to sales, the 500, driven by the item, which we told it to go to the sales revenue account. And then the uh, tax is going to go up, not to an income account, not to revenue, but a payable account, given the theory that we're not actually charging the sales tax we're just the collection agency the sales tax is being charged by the government to the customer therefore it's not income to us but a payable a liability as we collect the tax and then we're going to pay it later and because it's an inventory item inventory is going to be going down uh and and also the cost of goods sold is going to be going up and the sub ledger for inventory uh in terms of by well, the sub ledger for inventory by amount is also going to be impacted going down the units of inventory and the the customer sub ledger tracking who uh, who owes us the money is going to be impacted as well, complementing the accounts receivable. So a lot's going on with just the invoice now, but the data input is quite simple. So once again, I'm not going to record this closing this out. Do you want to leave without saving? I'm going to say yes. Sales tax now set up. 